Bernina buttonholes come in all shapes and sizes. Plus there's two buttonhole feet that come with the Bernina 880. Now here you're looking at what we turn buttonholes into on our Bernina Stitching Cosmos online course block when we dove into buttonholes and everything that they can do. We actually wove ribbon through the buttonholes and of course different colors of thread can always add to it. You can add decorative stitches to the ends of it. You can do so many different things. Plus over here, just so, since you're seeing it, we actually teach you how to make your own chenille. So this is combining two different fabric colors, some turquoise and purples, and then stitching it in place. Plus those extra wide stitches that I hope you're falling in love with on this particular Bernina model. These are the ones that actually sew side to side. So they really help expand and they're not just little tiny decorative stitches. Okay, so we're gonna get into how to make the buttonholes and we'll also do a video on how to make manual buttonholes as well. There's two ways to access the buttonhole menu. The easiest is just to touch the buttonhole menu tab here and you'll notice stitches 51 through 70 are buttonholes and then there are some eyelets. We'll do videos on those as well and then 60 is how to sew the buttons on once you're ready to put buttons in place. So the only thing is is here there are so many different kinds. How would you actually know which one to pick. Now, if you don't know which one to pick and you just want to stitch a standard one, just that 51 is super easy. 52 is just a narrower version for lighter weight fabrics. But if you want to actually be told which buttonhole is right for you, start over here at the dress form. This is the Bernina Creative Consultant where you can pick which fabric you're working on. And if this is kind of foreign to you, touch the question mark and then touch a fabric. So this one would be like fur fabric and velvet, things with a pile such as corduroy. So if you are picking an odd fabric like this and you choose then the technique you're doing on that fabric, like a buttonhole, it not only will give you to get you to the right buttonhole, it'll also probably put a few other settings in place for you. So let's just see which one it picks. So for this buttonhole, we're talking about the standard one. A few things have actually changed. I believe this actually made a longer stitch length. So two dents of a buttonhole might even pile up on that type of kind of uneven fabrics. Um, it has adjusted the pressure a little bit. So that would have been something I probably wouldn't have done, but the machine is doing it for me. And it has reduced the tension a little bit more than normal settings. So just note that when you do go in, and let's back up, maybe just let's pick a stretchier fabric that's lightweight and choose a buttonhole. Then this time it's gonna choose the stretch buttonhole. Again, a lighter pressure yet. Still 3A is our buttonhole foot. You can see that pictured on screen. And again, a little looser tension. So not to kind of pinch that lighter stretch fabric. If we go back one more little bit, we'll probably see that stabilizer is recommended and we might even choose to cord that buttonhole as well. A needle to use and the thickness of thread. So once you do that kind of steps, you're gonna find that each of the buttonholes will be picked perfectly with those extra settings. Now, if you just wanted to see what each of these buttonholes do, touch the question mark and then touch a buttonhole like 57. That's a keyhole buttonhole with a pointed bar tack, great for coats or trousers and non-stretchy, firmer fabrics. So each of the buttonholes, when you touch the, the question mark, will be identified of where those, uh, that particular one will be used. So I'm gonna go back to 51. I am gonna push clear because I'm not doing that particular fabric selection. And I wanna show you how you can measure the button on screen so you get the perfect length of buttonhole. With your button in your left hand, touch the eye for information. And we wanna measure out how long this or how big this button is. Go over here to where the 16, that's a default number, and the two arrows uh, pointing up and down. When you touch that, you are then getting given a new screen with a, a circle that is yellow. So as you turn the knobs, and it can be either one because it's showing um, both the knobs, you're going to place the button on screen and then turn the knob until it fits 
the button that you are going to be uh, using. And look, it already knows exactly the length it needs to stitch and it is ready to go. So that's where auto comes in. Auto has been uh, noted. And even though this says 16 and a half millimeters, that's the button size. Look here, 18.5 means it's added one millimeter extra for the tack at the top and one millimeter extra for the tack at the bottom. So this machine is totally smart. Now, when you see how these stitch out, you'll realize how easy buttonholes are to stitch on a Bernina 880. So most of the buttonholes that will fit within this length will be recommended that you use the 3A buttonhole, but just note that you have the 3C foot with no, you might say, automation, meaning it won't record how long your buttonhole is. That means you can make one twice as long as this foot, and that's where a manual buttonhole, one reason a manual buttonhole might be chosen over setting up the length automatically. Now this foot is a little bit bigger and it's always easier if you come in from the right side. It'll be tipped in and easy to pull that lever down and that's how easy it is to put a buttonhole foot on. Now there is another little location here, a little red marker that you could use in a different way where it will sew where the two red marks meet and you can put in your own length. But because we chose to use the button on screen feature, we don't have to do any part of that. If you'd like, slow the sm speed of the machine down and let's just go ahead and use the start stop button to stitch out a buttonhole. So you'll notice that the leg of the buttonhole is stitched first on the left side. And then as it finishes the length that we need it to be, it will stitch back to the beginning, do the tack at the top, and then stitch the second leg down, the right side, down towards the end. And then that way, both those satin stitches look identical. Something I love about a Berdina buttonhole, because you're not getting one stitching this way and one stitching that way, which actually kind of make the stitches kind of flip flop. So just let it stitch finish. It did the tack and a locking stitch. So you can just go ahead and use the thread cutter and watch what happens at the end, because once the foot lifts, it does reset. So make sure you don't like stop and lift that foot halfway through a buttonhole because otherwise you will get a resetting location there. It will automatically spring back to the beginning. Yes, I have some variegated thread in the machine right now. I thought, why not? Let's just go ahead and do buttonholes that way. If this is the perfect size, which it looks perfect, then you could make 99 more buttonholes. All you need to really have is the starting place for where the buttonhole needs to start and they'll be perfectly lined up. Which reminds me, just another random thought, you can actually bring over buttonholes into the embroidery side of the machine and you can actually embroider out buttonholes and um, have them all lined up. So it's really uh, some fun options there. Okay, let's talk about a few other things on screen. If you ever need to clear something out, remember if it's yellow, you can touch it and it clears it out to a default setting. When we went into the eye for information, there were some other choices. Like for this one, you can actually change how wide the gap is in the middle of where you're cutting that hole after you've stitched the button hole. You can, uh, so definitely if you need a little bit more space, usually that would be on something of a little thicker choice, but just note that you can actually go in and do just that. You can actually set it up for a manual button hole and actually just even stitch out one step of a button hole. So if you missed something for any reason, you had to take out a step, you could actually just stitch like the right side leg or just the bar tack at the top. So in the manual section, there's quite a few that you can do. Um, here's where you could record your own length, which is where that little marker, that red marker I kind of showed you earlier that allows you to do that part. But the easiest is just to go in here, put your button up on the screen, dial in the size and stitch out your buttonhole.
So I hope you'll try stitching out all the different buttonholes. Remember, if you are making your stitch book, this is a great one to stitch out all your buttonholes because they do look kind of fun. They don't take very long and try it out with some decorative threads. If you want more information on our Bernina Stitching Cosmos online course, make sure you click the links below this YouTube video. Plus you can watch 10 videos for free. And if this video has been helpful, make sure you give us a thumbs up, click on like, and so don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.